In this video we're going to look at the import bank link file procedure in REI Master. This procedure will allow you to import a file created through your internet banking that contains a list of transactions. This is very helpful when it comes to importing and processing receipts in bulk. First thing we'll look at is the setup item. Under general configuration here we need to select the bank link file format. So you can see there's a list of formats available in the system there. We'll be adding new ones to this as they become available. In my case this afternoon I'll be looking at the TXN file format. So I'm going to select that one there and save my changes. The next thing we need to do is to make sure that all our tenants have a BPAY or reference number assigned to them. So we're looking at this column here. You can see quite a few of my tenants have got the BPAY reference numbers assigned there. A couple do not. I've also got one here at the top where there is an extra number on the end. So you can see the majority of these ones are 10 digits or 10 characters there. Some have a couple less. This one in particular has one extra one. So I've got a couple of anomalies I guess in here that will assist me when I show you how the import procedure works and how we can deal with those ones at the time. To enter the BPAY or reference number on a tenant record, double click to open up the record. Under tenancy info, modify and the field is at the bottom here as you can see. This is the one that I've got my number inserted already. So as I mentioned the reference number should be 10 digits in length. Now we're going to have a look at the import file procedure. To get to that step there under process we select the import bank link file. It'll then bring up the screen for us to import the file but what I have appearing on the screen first of all is my tenants with rental increases due screen. So we need to look at and action these accordingly before we look at the import procedure. So you may or may not get this screen popping up depending on in rental increases that may be due for a particular period. In my case I'm not going to action any of these ones here. I'm going to close and take myself to the import screen. So this is the import screen. Step one of course is to import the file. So the file as I mentioned needs to be created through your internet banking and saved to a location on your computer that you can browse to. So I've got my location here going to highlight my little TXN file and then select open. As you can see it's now loaded the transactions in there. We've got a list of ones that have been assigned, we've got some unassigned ones, we've got ones with little cautions or warnings on them. So let's have a look through the list here and see what we need to do in order to process as many receipts as possible using the bulk processing procedure. So if we have a look at the very first one in the list here, there's a little green arrow on the left hand side, we've got a reference, we've got a name, we've got some rental amounts, rental periods, all that sort of information. We've got an import reference here, a description and the import amount. So these three columns here, the import columns there, this is the information that's contained within that import file. And because this reference number on the file matches to a tenant in REI Master, it's filled in the details here on the left hand side. So nice and easy with that one. Correct import reference matches to the records in REI Master. So let's just have a look again. The rental amount for this tenant $310 on a weekly basis. The import amount here exactly $310. So little green arrow means that we'll be able to process this one and receipt that $310 against the tenant's record. Same thing for the next few records as we can see green arrows import amounts match the rental amounts. We get to this one here, little red arrow, unknown. We don't have any detail about a tenant on there, but it certainly does have a reference number on the file, has an amount on there, and our feedback, as you can see, this one we excluded because there's no matching direct credit or BPAY reference number found. So basically what it's telling you is that this number here doesn't exist against any of the tenant records in there. Now you may need to look to find this number to see if it does relate to a tenant. If you've got a list of the reference numbers that you've assigned to tenants and you can identify it, we can resolve this one. So by highlighting that record, we can get access to the options either by right clicking. And these are the options we've got there. Open tenant card, process an individual receipt or assign a line, which is what we want to do now. The other way of getting access to these drop down list here, again, highlight the record and then select individual line processing options. We've got the same ones as you can see. 
now you can't do things in bulk you can't select multiple lines on here it is individual line information so we're going to assign this tenant to the import reference number that we can see on the screen here so to do that right click select assign line import reference to a tenant now we can look at our list of information so if you found the name that relates to this one you can scroll down to identify it the other option of course is to click on the header bar here to put them in reference order number we can also then use the search options at the top here uh, to find that number as we go so if I just put the dot in there I'm just going to move this screen down a little bit and what we're looking for of course is that number so I have to type it as it becomes available there 0031650529 look I've got to that point there but you'll see here we've got a reference number that's close it's missing a number on the end there so that very well may occur it might make a mistake in entering reference numbers on a tenant record what I've been able to do is look at my list of tenants and the reference numbers that are assigned and I can uh, agree with this tenant being this particular reference but of course we've missed one but I want to update that reference number so I highlight and select and then you're asked or prompted to replace the existing value on the tenant record with this new updated number so if I say yes on there the screen refreshes scroll back up here we've got our tenant here we've updated the reference number and it's now been assigned to that tenant record as we can see okay the next one's down we've got this little one here orange arrow or yellow arrow we have a look across to the feedback screen here or the feedback column what it shows here caution the import amount doesn't equal an exact rental period what it's saying is this figure here $420 doesn't equal exactly the $450 a week that the tenants expected to pay so what are we going to do about these ones we've got some options if we go up the top here the little caution options receipt all non-matching amounts as rent using rent to the day method so for this particular one nice and easy although that import amount there doesn't equal the weekly amount that's what I want it to do it receipt it using rent to the day so I'm going to tick the box there and so this one here will be included uh, as a processed in bulk receipt and we can have a look down there's a few other orange ones on there this one here very similar one there import amount and rent credit doesn't equal an exact rental period so again the 465 here as the import amount we go across there the actual rental amount is correct we've got this rent credit sitting here for the tenant so again what we want with that one is to have it receipted as rent to the day so I've already ticked the box at the top there so again that one's going to be included as part of the, the bulk processing that we'll do let's look a bit further down this red one here excluded no matching re direct credit or BPAY reference number but again if I have a look at this one here with the import detail no deposit reference so it doesn't actually have a number we've got an import description here with a, a name seems to be an electrician or supplier we deal with and if you actually look at the import amount is a minus figure so looking at that there what we've done in the file that we created through the internet banking is actually imported or included a payment that's been made so this one is correct we don't actually want to include this one in any of the importing we do so that one we can leave it's got a tick over on the right hand side here saying exclude from processing and that's exactly what's going to happen when we go through and process the bulk receipting so again we'll look a bit further down we've got this one here a caution one coming up in yellow or orange again import amount rent credit doesn't equal the exact rental amount 450 there 450 there we've got a rent credit so quite a few of those ones there but again what we want it to do is receipt all the non-matching amounts using rent to the day so again we can just ignore those other ones but we've got two others here so let's have a look and see how we can action those ones what have we got here we've got this one here excluded again because there's no matching uh, reference to any of the ones there now I don't see anything else for that one so perhaps again we need to search for or find that particular reference so if I right click on this one here we want to assign the line to a tenant record so again we can see that one there I'm not sure what it is let's just go back and delete that one we start typing again 0 3 oops, 003 
uh, and it has found something that's close here it is it's the one with my extra character or digit at the end of it so the number again recorded against the tenant card doesn't match the one in the import file but again if I go back to my list of tenants the references that I've assigned to them I can see on my list that this tenant is correct but again we want to reassign or update this reference number on their card so highlight and select and again you're prompted do you want to update the new value onto that tenant card yes you do and again it'll pop through there and we go down to where have they gone there they are so now we have actually assigned this one correctly to the tenant there but again the import amount doesn't exactly match the amount there in the credit but again our orange caution ones we're going to receive these as rent to the day another one here a red one excluded again why again the description here the pay to date will exceed the vacate date set for this tenant so $450 there tenants paid to the 28th of June and the vacate date is the 29th of June so exactly right $450 we don't need that much money in rent to get this tenant paid up to their vacate date so in this case here we will exclude this one there's no point attempting to receipt money it won't be able to do it for us so what can we do with this one again right click one of our options here for processing is to process an individual receipt so let's do that we select that option there we're just going to create or process it like it was a manual one that we need so some of that money that the tenant has paid does need to go towards rent so we'll select the rent option there as it shows in my option here we need $50 to get them to pay it up to their vacate date so let's pop that in we still have to receipt the other $400 because there's an import amount of $450 it's telling me that the tenant has physically deposited $450 so we need a receipt to match that amount so like we do with any of these ones where the tenants paid all the rent that's necessary let's receipt this just as a deposit of overpaid rent and the amount there of course $400 we now want our receipt total to match what the import amount will be payment methods direct credit on this one so we can save on that confirm our details there and then save on this one here as well finalize that receipt and my aria master set up to email out receipts so from here I've got my email uh, ready to go I've got my attachment of the receipt there I can hit the send button and off that'll go to the tenant and we can acknowledge of course the receipt of their money into the trust account okay so that line there I'll just click away from it you can see now that this one's been processed successfully we've done the manual processing so again it's going to be excluded from the bulk processing that we do now if I have a look up and down here seem to be ready to go in the correct order one last check I'm going to do and this is really important I think you should make a habit of doing this double check and have a look down the import descriptions here and the majority of these tenants the import description is just the deft payment that's been made that we're including but I get to this one here it does actually stand out a little bit the description on there I've got a tenant's name and it says it's bond even the amount here is quite a large amount much more than any of the other weekly or fortnightly amounts that we can see there so again with this one here very careful we want to make sure that this is receipted correctly how do we check it's been assigned to a, a tenant record you have the option of opening the tenant card here as you can see in the filter options to so open that one up pop into the tenancy info and the bond and deposits and as you can see here the bond required twenty four hundred dollars there's nothing at the authority or in the trust here so that's what we're going to do now is actually receipt that as the bond that it needs to be so again close out of here highlight the transaction line there we don't want this to be processed as rent because that's what's going to happen of course we want to right click and process this one as an individual receipt so again in this case here bond $2400 save save and finalize that receipt again send off a copy of that there 
Okay, so again, that particular transaction line has been processed successfully, as you can see. So again, that one's going to be excluded from there. Really, we're now to the point where we can actually process all of the other items on there. So if we just move across to the processing options, I have the optional uh, setting here to print or email the receipts. You did see as I processed a couple of those individually that it is set up for the emailing option. Really, that's what I want to do. So I'm going to continue with that in my normal situation here. For the purposes of my demonstration today, I'm going to untick this one. I don't really want printing and emailing to occur as part of my demonstration to you. So from there, we are ready to go. What do we do? We hit the process all button, not excluded, i.e. the ones that we've all manually done, or even the one like this one here, the payment that's not required. So we select the button there. You've got the prompt about ensuring no one else's processing receipts. Make sure they aren't. We can click OK. Look at that. Whole heap of uh, records processed already. So two we did manually. One was dis uh, uh, disregarded from there. So we processed nearly 30 receipts just in a few seconds or so. The last step, of course, we can print a report to identify what has been processed. So we can either print that as a hard copy by selecting the print option here, or we can print it to a PDF. That way we've got a copy of it there as well. So let's do that. I'm just going to select the print option for that one. And there we have that particular report. And it's just a breakdown that shows what's been processed and how successful it was. Some of them are processed using the rent to the day based on what we identified. My payment, that one for ABC Electrical, ignored of course. But there we have a list of all the information that we require. So that one there, again, you might want a printed copy or you can save a copy of that one accordingly. So back on our screen here, one last thing of course when we close out of processing, we're prompted about consolidating all the receipts into one single deposit. So it's like when you do your banking, you include all deposits in one banking record. The answer if we want that to occur is yes. If I say no, we're going to list, get a list of all the individual transactions uh, one after the other through our reconciliation screen. We've got them all consolidated into a single deposit. And if I pop into my reconciliation screen here, there we have that deposit. As you can see, all I highlight, we can see them all at the bottom of the screen there. So a bit over eighteen and a half thousand dollars in receipts there, as we can see. So if I had selected no to doing that, instead of seeing as one banking record, we would have had all of these individual transactions showing one after the other on the screen here, and we'd be able to reconcile them individually if we wish to do so. So there we have it, importing your bank link file into ARIA Master. It's going to save you a lot of time.